Good morning. It's your vote counts. I'm Scott Mitchell, Senator Greg McCourtney, Representative Melissa Provenzano joining us this morning. Thank you both for being here. Let me start with you, Representative Provenzano. There was a disagreement about kids in school this week. We know what's happening with Omicron. So, Representative Provenzano, who's right and who's wrong here? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I, I, uh, when I when I read those comments, I was very concerned. Um, it did feel like uh, there's a little bit of a disconnect between the state and what's really going on in schools. Uh, you know, I'm an old principal, uh, emphasis on the old, and I can tell you I covered many uh, classes or lunch duty. Those who had CDLs would hop behind the wheel of a bus if they need to, and I'll tell you that right now it's all hands on deck in all of our public schools across the state, and if you can help, you're helping. Uh, and so I think it was a little disheartening, to to be very honest, uh, and you know, the simple fact of the matter is, yes, in person is best, but with the current surge, we just have folks that that are ill that shouldn't be in front of kiddos. Senator Courtney, you heard that exchange between uh, those officials. Your thoughts about, is this helpful? Is this going to help parents in our education system moving forward, this sort of conversation? Well, no. I mean, at this point, uh, watching uh, two political figures uh, battle it out uh, is not going to help anything. Uh, I absolutely, uh, my, my wife works in a school, uh, if you don't have teachers to be in the classroom, I'm not quite sure why you're going to send the kids to school. I absolutely agree. Uh, education needs to happen in a classroom, if at all possible. Uh, I think we've reached a place where, where it was pretty hard to do that. Uh, I know a lot of schools took a couple of days off. They'll have Monday off again. Hopefully that will calm down uh, this variant and, and we'll be able to move forward and, and hopefully we'll all be able to pull on the same rope when we do. It's an election year. You've got that sort of uh, disagreements inside of the Republican Party. Legislative session coming up really soon. Are we going to see this sort of disagreements coming in this leg legislative session, Senator McCourtney? Oh, I, yes, I, ab absolutely. Uh, there, there's a, a battle inside the party uh, on on a lot of different fronts. On the education front, uh, it, it's going to break down in a lot of different ways. You're going to see a lot of ideas and, and a lot of of push uh, towards being able to let parents have more decision making power over their their children, their education, where they get the education, uh, what they're taught. Uh, and, and in a lot of ways, you know, I represent a district that has no private schools. Uh, and so Republican, Democrat, rural, urban, uh, this breaks down in a lot of ways and, and, and it's going to be a big fight, but it's going to be something that we tackle this year. You see a lot of friction this upcoming session, Representative? <laughs> I think always. It's just part of the way the game is played. But what I'm, I'm noticing as of late is a lot of the states around us are starting to, to ramp up uh, teacher salaries again, New Mexico and Mississippi most recently. So that's definitely something we're going to have to at least have a conversation about. Uh, a bigger concern is your support staff. Uh, and the, the income that they can make versus going somewhere else because you've seen wages rise sort of across the board right now to, to lure people in. And when you can make more money working at Amazon, you know, versus in a school, it's that servant-minded soul that we've been relying on for so long that uh, we need to take care of. Coming up, the friction about health care got ratcheted up quite a bit this week. In our next half hour, we'll talk about that. Welcome back to our second edition this hour of Your Vote Counts. And Representative and Senator, you saw the Supreme Court ruling this week impacted on private businesses, but also left the mandate in place. Help us understand how the Supreme Court decision could play into Oklahoma this year and in this session. Well, in this session, the, it really just gives us the groundwork for where the fight's going to be. We were going to fight about uh, vaccines and and the line between individual freedom and, and a business owner having their own freedom. Uh, I will always be on the side of a, of a business owner being able to decide for themselves what's the right policy uh, and, and in a lot of ways who it is that they want to hire and, and the type of people that they want to hire. And, and so uh, the Supreme Court laid that out pretty well. I think health care is, is a different conversation. We've always had mandates on health care workers and, and 
that, that have been kind of above and beyond the the normal private sector employee. So uh, we're, we'll definitely fight about this uh, this session. Uh, unfortunately, none of those fights are going to actually be the fight we need to have about how we get our health outcomes better. And we'll be talking about that a lot this coming session. Representative, he's uh, senator says we'll be fighting about that. You know, a lot of that's going to come between Republicans. From where you're sitting, where do you think this is going? Uh, it'll be fun to watch uh, sometimes, but I know I've heard, I can tell you I've heard from a lot of constituents concerned about uh, the the vaccination mandate. Um, but usually when I sit down and talk to them and I'm like, well, I understand, you know, my hair salt, hairstylist is uh, immunocompromised. She can't be vaccinated. And for that reason, you know, I could never support across the board uh, mandatory vaccines, but it was vaccinate or test weekly. And usually when I have that conversation, people go, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll test weekly. Uh, why not? So it was um, something that it'll be interesting to see how it plays out on the floor. That uh, test weekly part of it was not really well reported by media. So anyway, but it's moot now. Uh, let me start with, uh, to bring up what Senator McCourtney brought, there are other things. The, the downward trend in all of our health outcomes, I mean, it's just really, it is what it is, as the saying goes. Representative Provenzano, what are you wanting to see in this um, upcoming session to figure out how we can get off the bottom and start heading up that hill and get our health outcomes a lot better than they are? Oh, I thank you for asking that. I, I would hope, you know, greater access to health care. I do uh, see where a lot of our Oklahomans have taken advantage of the Medicaid expansion piece, and I hope that Oklahomans continue to do that and that we work to educate the population on the services that are available available to them and then hopefully lean on the insurance companies as well. Uh, you know, our rates have gone up across the board for for um, for insurance, uh, you know, and as an educator, I've heard it loud and clear from educators that uh, our insurance companies have raised rates uh, higher than the, the surrounding states. So, you know, cost and access, I believe, is what I'd love to see. And it, I would be crazy if I didn't ask this question of Senator McCourtney. When we last left, there was disagreements between the legislature and the governor about the Oklahoma Health Care Authority and managed care. Are we going to see that resumed? Oh, we're going to see the conversation uh, continue. There's zero doubt about that. Uh, and there have been a, a few shots fired uh, during uh, what I call the off season. Uh, you know, the, the basic disagreement is the, the model for how we move forward. Uh, we've got to have better health, health outcomes. Uh, the managed care system that the, the governor has been supporting uh, really puts the insurance company on top of that pyramid. Uh, and, and I think that it's safe to say that the House and the Senate uh, are much more interested in, in some kind of system that always keeps the patient, the doctor, the healthcare provider at the top of that decision-making tree. Uh, but given that, we have to make a change. We can't keep doing what we're doing. As T.O. once said, get your popcorn ready. It's going to be a doozy. Representative yeah. Provenzano, Senator McCourtney, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank this you. See this again at news9.com slash your vote counts. And follow me on Twitter at Mitchell Talks. <laughs>